Hey guys, so a lot of you written to me saying that you're still having trouble understanding and solving questions in option D of paper 2. So I decided to make this quick guide that shows you how to break down and easily answer questions for option D for both SL and HL. Let's get started. So this video, focusing on option D of paper 2 of the IB exam, is going to be split into roughly three sections. In the first section, we're going to look at how to approach an exam paper. So how we should break down the exam paper in the first 20 minutes. This includes things like taking notes, making diagrams, and other kind of tasks so that you understand the scenario in which option D is based. Every option D paper is based on an object-oriented scenario and includes code snippets. And understanding these at the beginning of the exam is the key to overall uh, understanding the questions and succeeding on the exam. Next, we're gonna go over some general tips for the exam, how to prepare for the exam, and some things you can do during the exam to make it easier. And then finally, we're going to be talking about different command terms, that is different terms that are used in option D questions that can, um, that can help you understand how to answer those questions. So we'll look at a variety of terms that are used in these questions, along with the corresponding uh, mark schemes to questions that contain the terms. And through that, I hope that you get an understanding of how to understand the variety of questions that are present on option D. Now, just to give you a quick overview of the exam before we actually get into the approach. Um, so we've got the SL and HL uh, versions of the exam. The SL exam is gonna be 60 minutes long and is gonna consist of three large scale questions. And the HL exam is gonna be 80 minutes long and also consist of three large scale questions. Now, in terms of content, SL is just covering, you know, is just covering like um, very basic object-oriented programming. And HL is going to not only cover object-oriented programming, but also include uh, some data structures similar to what you would see uh, in topic five, but using Java. So HL is undoubtedly a bit more complex as HL ought to be. Now, in this, in this video, we're not gonna talk about specific content, but I did make two videos, both for SL and HL, and I'll link those in the description so you can check those out if you want to get more into the content for each of those exams. Okay, so let's go over a couple of tips on how to approach an option D exam paper in the first 20 minutes of the exam, so like as soon as you get it. Now, the first two tips are actually kind of related to each other. Basically, the first thing you wanna do is you want to look at the code that's given to you on the exam and build a diagram showing the classes, variables, and methods that are included in that code. This is not only the code on the first page, but any, any code snippets that are located uh, throughout the exam paper. And you wanna build a diagram not dissimilar from a UML diagram. So basically you want to show how they're related to each other, what variables, and what variables and what methods you have on each class. Furthermore, you also want to look at what methods exist but have comments in them, giving a description, because usually this means that you're going to have to write those, met those methods later on. And if you can understand those from the beginning, then it'll be a lot easier for you to write that code later on. Now, the second tip is really just part of that, skim the paper together as much information as you can. Now, just this understanding of the code that's been presented to you is crucial because every option D is based on some sort of object-oriented scenario. And the better you understand that scenario, the better you'll be able to comprehend what questions are asking you in the exam paper. Now, the next thing you wanna do is underline any command terms. And by command terms, we mean things like describe, compare, state, uh, construct, etc. Now, it's just a good idea to go through and for all the questions, just underline the command terms so that you don't overlook what it is you need to do for each question. And then finally, I would say for individual questions that require you to write a method, maybe not just a method, but also even just require you to write some code, you need to figure out what the input and what the output should be. So basically, what do we have in terms of data, methods, parameters, and what do they want? What do we have and what do they want? And understanding these two things can be really helpful in understanding what code you need to write to successfully answer a question. That being said, let's go ahead and look at a real SL paper. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just kind of go through how I would actually break down a, uh, an option D paper. Now this is an SL paper, but I, I think that most of these principles apply also to HL. But so the first thing you wanna do is we really wanna break down the description. Like, in my opinion, 
90% of success in this exam is just understanding what the hell is going on. So here it says we have a hotel chain and the hotel chain has a loyalty scheme in which customers are awarded 1,000 points for each day they stay in one of their hotels. So 1,000 points for each day they stay in one of their hotels. So we're just gonna write that down, 1,000 points each day, each day. And with these points, customers can achieve one of three status levels, gold, silver, or bronze. The level will determine the extra services that they, which they are entitled to. So customers are getting 1,000 points each day, and then based on that, they can become gold, uh, silver, or bronze. Now, just like drawing this out might seem kind of trivial, but honestly, if you do this, it's just gonna be faster because you can, like, you'll have access to the really relevant information in a diagram format rather than having to read through a description again. Now, the total number of points collected during the current year will determine which of the three status levels they are assigned for the following year. So the points, so for example, if we collected points during 2020, then that would give us our status during 2022. So for example, only points connected, collected in 2018 will determine the status level for 2022. So uh, current year points equals next year status. And again, I'm writing this out. I'm underlining stuff, but I'm also just writing this out because again, it's just about having really handy access to really relevant information. Additionally, new customers, so new customers receive additional bonus points as part of a promotion. So new customers get additional bonus points. The points class keeps details of the points and status levels of each customer. We're gonna go through and talk about the points class and then I'm gonna show you how I would just diagram this. Okay, so we have class points and we have member ID, total points, bonus points, status now, status next year, and then an array of all visits. Uh, we also have number of visits this year um, pub, and then we have, we also have a constructor right here that allows us to put in the member ID, bonus points, Y, which is um, like just the number of visits this year, and status. So, okay, we have points, and there's a few details that I want to keep track of. So, first are points. This, like, so, okay. So, class points, if we have one member ID, then that means that this points class is going to be for each customer. So each customer has a points class. And then some of the information that it keeps track of is going to be, um, so, so info is gonna be points. Uh, so info is gonna be points, uh, status, and what else do we have? We've got points, status, and you also have member ID. So notice I'm not writing down every variable, but I'm kind of just, I'm just writing down some context um, for like what we can generally find in the points class. Like what, like what, a, what a points object would mean. So a points object is going to represent a customer, and in that points object we're going to have information about points, status, and the member ID. So that ID is going to link us to the customer. Now we're also going to have um, visits, right? So we're going to have we have 366 possible visits, but so for every like every points class, we're going to have multiple visits. And let's see, like, so this is actually visits right there. So it's called, we're gonna have multiple visits object. So all, um, all visits, we can even write that in the information. And then we can, we're gonna have, we're gonna write 366 possible visits. Um, because if you look right here, like that's the maximum, right? So we could have one visit for every day of the year. And yeah, also we want to have number of visits this year because that's another that's another piece of information. And that's going to be y, right? We're going to have the number of visits this year as y. Now, just looking at look just looking at some of these constructors, I'm actually not going to write these down because I think once we have this context, we we generally get like what points is doing and these are more technical like this is these are more technical this is more technical information that we will probably use, but it's not really relevant to understanding just the context, which is what we want to do right now. Now, next, one thing that I always uh, say to, 
or look into is whatever methods are there, but for which the code is missing. And so we have one method is gold. And presumably this lets us decide whether the member, um, so like whether the member that's attached to points has achieved gold status. It's probably gonna be Boolean because it's is gold. Calculate total points and then days missing. So I imagine days missing might be like the days that, um, it might be like the days when there's no visit. And um, let's see what else we had. We had to calculate total points. It's probably just calculating total points for the whole year. We don't really know a lot about it, but just even like thinking about these methods helps us understand where we're going in this particular uh, scenario. So that's like our first snippet of code. And in every like option D exam, you're gonna have this, and this is pretty much gonna be the most important snippet. But let's go ahead and let's move on and see what other code we have access to. Well, okay, we're not gonna focus too much on the technical at the moment, but we're gonna like look at some stuff in the scenario. So right here, it says the customers will be assigned one of three levels for the following year. So bronze is gonna be, so we have gold, silver, or bronze, and it's gonna be based, so on the current year's total points. Um, so bronze is gonna be less than 10,000. So we can actually go back to right here. So we can just say bronze is less than 10,000. And we can write that where we had original diagram. Uh, silver is 10,000 to 50,000. Now, where you actually write this depends on like your style. Like I started writing on the exam, but I didn't have space. But I guess I would really recommend writing it on another piece of paper, just writing out all the details. So I think it can still help to like read through some of these questions so we get an idea of like what we're gonna be looking at. So in 2018, Tim became a member for the first time and is awarded a bonus of 1,000 points. So far in 2018, Tim has stayed three times at one of these hotels. First visit lasted two days, the second visit lasted one day, and the third visit lasted six days. So actually we had a bunch of visit objects and this tells us that we're probably going to have number of days in our visit. Let's move on to some more code. Okay, right here, so finally we do have our, uh, our visits object, our visits class that allows us to get visits objects, visit objects. And so on this visit, on this visits class, you have number of days and hotel code. So what hotel did they stay in and number of days? Okay, and that's pretty clear just by looking at the code. So yeah, and if we look at this right here, this tells us how we're gonna use all that code. So we're gonna create um, an array, global array with points representing a customer. Um, we, we can create new customer objects and add them to this. And we can also create new visits and those visits will be added to the different uh, points objects. And that should already have been obvious like from, um, from looking at the first snippet of code, but anyways, here it is. And let's see if we have any more code. And I guess that's it. So like just kind of going through this process, we get a pretty big, we get a pretty good understanding of how things work. So here we just have some basic context. And here we have like sort of the class structure. So the different objects and how they interact with each other. And we didn't even really solve any questions yet. We literally just read like the description of the scenario and then just looked at code snippets to get this. And now that we have this, we can go ahead and we can, I mean, it makes it a lot easier to, under, to answer um, these questions. What I wanna do now is I wanna go through and I want to, um, I basically wanna do underline some of the command terms. So number 10, um, outline, uh, okay, explain. Um, state, state, construct the method is gold. So that's the method we saw earlier. Um, and then, okay, let's go down here. Construct a UML diagram. Um, what else? State, construct the method, construct the method. Suggest, identify, okay, outline the steps. So, now we know what we need to do in each question. And additionally, like just looking at these terms gives us an idea of how much time this exam is gonna take and how much time uh, we're gonna need to devote to each question. And that makes planning a lot easier. So broadly, like that is how I would plan out an exam. And again, the same, the same principles apply to HL. Like the differences in HL, obviously you're gonna be dealing with more complex data structures. And particularly when you're like kind of summarizing your, your classes, like points and visits, you may want to make those, uh, what those data structures are clear. Like, so for example, all visits is like visits, number of visits each year 
is going to be an array or a stack or whatever it is. Like you may want to make that clear, um, but again, you're going to have the code snip in the beginning and code throughout. The structure is going to be relatively similar. So that's how you'd also break down an HL exam. Anyways, now let's go on to some more general tips for succeeding on the exam. So the first general piece of advice is to make sure to know all of the object-oriented programming terminology on the option D study guide. So these include things like access modifiers or UML diagram, or basically any of the language that we use to talk about object-oriented programming. Now this is essential not only for understanding theoretical questions, but also for understanding how to answer some of the more complex coding questions. And if you don't really know this terminology, then please check out the option D study guide. There I basically uh, just created a whole vocabulary bank. And if you know all of that, all the vocabulary there, you should be good to go. And it's something you really just need to memorize. Now the next piece of advice would be to spend roughly 30 minutes of your time planning and analyzing uh, the exam and the other 70% 70 70 answering questions. Now the amount of time you have for this exam is going to vary depending on whether it's SL or HL. But I'd really recommend spending a significant, significant chunk of your time just analyzing the question paper like I did in the uh, walkthrough of the SL exam. Next, in these question papers, you're going to have a lot of multi-part coding questions and they get, they get progressively more difficult. So if you have a question that's like A, B, C, D, then A and B are gonna be easier and they're just gonna get harder and harder. Now, what I would recommend is to, uh, is to just make sure and try it and make sure you get those first couple of questions right. Because a lot of the times those are easier questions and the purpose behind those questions is to get you to better understand the context of the question so you can more easily understand the complex coding questions later on. Next, I would say make sure to pay attention to methods that only have the method definition and comments. So like right here, for example, in the points class, uh, we had um, is gold, calculate total points, and days missing. And just make sure you pay attention to these methods because throughout the exam paper, we do actually write code for some of these methods. So make sure, just know that those are going to be significant and maybe even consider how you could answer them before we even move on to reading the questions themselves. Now, finally, don't take theoretical questions for granted. These can save you. There are a lot of theoretical questions spread out throughout the exam, and those can give you a significant amount of points such that they may not compensate for like completely not understanding object-oriented programming, but they can definitely help if you have trouble with coding in Java. Okay, so now let's do a quick run through of some command terms. So some terminology you might run into on the exam. Now the first is construct. So construct the method, show delayed, that outputs the IDs, etc. Now these questions are probably the most straightforward, not in the sense that they're necessarily easy to understand because there is a lot going on here, but it's basically you just need to write code to meet the specification of, um, of the question itself. So for example, right here, um, you need to, as I said earlier, it really helps to like to break down these questions into what they, like what you want and what they're giving you. So it says output the IDs of all delayed flights in the array inbound that have not yet landed and that have an ETA before the given time t. The time t is passed as a string parameter. So you have an array inbound and you have the time t and you need to write a method that outputs the IDs based on that information. So again, pretty straightforward, just write the code. Next, construct a URL, a UML diagram. Now here you're drawing a UML diagram to describe a class. And I think looking at this mark scheme is quite important because you have some of the things that you should have in, in a UML diagram. It should be divided into three distinct sections. We should have a component with the variables, with the methods. We should, we should uh, indicate any access modifiers like private and public. We can do that using plus or minus. And we don't necessarily need to include, access or include accessors and mutators like get and set. Now next, um, we're gonna have define. And define is pretty straightforward. Um, so it says define the term method signature. Now, how you answer this is going to depend on how many points it is. Now, if you have two points, then you're going to, there's maybe like two pieces of information you need to give about the term. But if it's one point, it's just gonna be like a one sentence type deal. Next, you have describe. 
Now describe is gonna be more substantial than define. So describe is generally going to involve um, two or three points and each point needs to be elaborated on. So right here it says two ethical issues. Describe two ethical issues that may arise if modules of the new POS system are developed from open source code. And that's worth four points. So that indicates that probably you need to, well, obviously you need to give two ethical issues, but each of those needs to be described in depth. And that description is gonna be one point. And just kind of looking at the, uh, the mark scheme right here. So it says award, uh, award four max. And award two marks for a valid issue if a detailed discussion has been provided. Only give issue credit for issues that have some ethical connection. So these are just a list of issues. And the point is you need to kind of state the issue and then give some description of it. Now next, distinguish. It says distinguish between a class and an instantiation. You must make reference to the UML provided. So right here, this is maybe a more complex question and it's worth three points. And it says award three max, one mark each for definitions of a class and an object, and one mark for an example relating to the UML diagram that involves both class and object. So basically you need to dis distinguish isn't even like really so much talking about the differences as it's defining both terms. And then here you had this additional caveat that you had to make a reference to UML. So you had to like basically describe both of them in the context of a UML diagram or class structure. Next, we have explain. Uh, explain is generally gonna be more substantial. So right here, the first part of the question is define, which is relatively straightforward. I mean, it's two points, so we're just gonna give the definition and then maybe elaborate with some detail. Next, explain one advantage of the OOP feature inheritance with reference to the scenario. So we're going to state that advantage and then we're gonna get another couple of points for another two points for explaining it. So right here it says, um, award one for the advantage itself, one for elaboration, then one for reference to the context. Now, one problem that I see a lot of students have is they forget the context in which the exam is taking place. And anytime you're answering these questions, it's really important to reference the context of the question. Next, state, define, identify. We've kind of gone over to define a couple of times. State and identify, um, and sometimes define, are generally gonna be just like one point questions. State the relationship, Really simple, just one sentence. And again, it's not even so much the, the command terms as the points that give you an indicator of how like how the role you need to answer these questions. A sketch and draw. So it's a sketch link list after running the following code fragment. Now, I've seen these like sketch. So usually it's either like draw a, a UML diagram or sketch some kind of data structure which is more often than not a linked list or a binary tree on, um, on an HL exam. And really like the main components of those are gonna be like, you need to have the data itself. You need to have the pointers in the, and you need to have the pointers in the correct places. You also need to have the start and end of uh, the linked list. Or in case of the binary tree, you're gonna have to have the root node obviously, and you know, any, really all of the nodes. The binary tree is a bit more, is a bit of a no brainer in my opinion, but the linked list, you need to you really need to have those pointers as well as a start and end, assuming it's not like a circular linked list. Uh, suggest, suggest is kind of similar to explain. Uh, you're basically making a statement and supporting it with some detail. And I say it's similar to explain because they're usually going to be uh, questions that consist of a larger number of points. Um, and so right here, it's just how the hotel chain might make use of the inheritance feature. And right here, we basically have four reasons why. Um, it says, do not award two for more than, do not award more than two for a generic response. And what that basically, what that's basically saying is that you need to answer the question referring directly to the classes from pages 12 and 14. So yeah, four points. I'd honestly say like probably two well-developed points or just four pieces of information, but a clear reference to the classes from pages 12 and 14. Uh, outline outline is like one of the most common uh, like command terms used in the exam. This is basically like one point for the stating the answer and another point for elaboration. So right here, outline one advantage of using a binary search. Um, binary search is much faster than sequential search because it has a search range for every comparison. So one for identification and one for elaboration. And that's pretty much it for the command terms. Now, just to wrap up, I wanna go over some things we went, uh, we went over in this video. 
The first is that you really need to know your object-oriented programming terminology. That is absolutely essential to succeeding on these exams. Second, make sure you know the command terms and understand point values. That'll give you a much better idea of how to approach and understand a question. Uh, next, spend a significant amount of time planning, um, planning or analyzing the paper in the beginning. So that like 15 minute walkthrough I did of the exam, like that's at a minimum what you need to be doing because understanding the context of the option D, understanding the scenario, is absolutely crucial to understanding what any of the questions are asking you. And finally, remember the what you have and what you, what you want approach that we went through with regards to individual coding questions. Break down the question, look at what you have, what you're given, and what you want, and try to fit what you have into, um, into your diagram from your planning stage to see like where uh, see where those methods or where those variables are coming from. So you better understand how to write the quote, how to write the code to address that specific question that you're working on. Anyways, this is probably the most difficult option just in terms of content, and I wish you the best of luck. If you found value in this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Have a nice day.